Chapter 11 Blaine Blaine pulled up to the center and took a deep breath. He could do this. He could be around these kids. They weren't his sole responsibility, and they deserved this. His issues weren't their fault. The words were easy enough to say, but they were a lot harder to believe. Especially with his memories from the past flooding him more and more often. Even though things seemed to be going better, he'd actually been out with Kenzie twice now, which he was pretty sure was a record for him. He knew that one familiar word, one specific memory, could send him spiraling back down again. He'd felt it when he looked at the one picture he still had, a picture of them together at the lake. I'm going to try and make it work, he'd told the boy in the picture next to him. I don't want to end up alone. The boy had said nothing, but Blaine was certain he'd felt the boy's scorn. He could almost hear the words the boy might say. The words that had played over and over in his head for the last 18 years. I ended up alone. You couldn't protect me, and you won't be able to protect her. You'll fail her, too. But he was determined not to. He wasn't sure what it was about Kenzie, but something about her made him want to break free made him want to try again. Perhaps it was the simple way she seemed to accept him just the way he was. Perhaps it was her faith in God. Perhaps it was just the brilliant smile that warmed his soul when she flashed at his direction. Whatever it was, she was the first woman to pierce his wall in years, and he wasn't ready to give up. Not yet. With a final sigh, he stepped out of his Mustang and headed toward the front door of the center. A small, jingling sound announced his arrival, and Shelby glanced up with a smile. Hey, Blaine, Kinsey's not here if you were looking for her. He wondered if Kinsey had told Shelby about their dates. Probably. Though his experience with women was limited, he'd heard the other guys talk enough to know that women love to share those kind of experiences. Besides, Shelby was looking at him differently, with a mischievous twinkle in her eye. He shoved his hands in his jean pockets and rocked back on his heels. I'm actually not here for Kinsey. I'm here because it's my day to hang out with the kids. Shelby's eyes widened and her mouth formed a silent O. Oh. Right, of course, I knew that. But the pink color spreading across her cheeks told him she had forgotten. Her head dropped to the counter in front of her as her hands sifted through the papers. I just need to find your original form. Aha, here it is. She brandished a piece of paper as if it were some lost treasure and then slid it across to him. I just need you to check the information and make sure it's still accurate so that we have it on file. Then you can add today to the bottom. Blaine scanned the form, but everything appeared in order. He took the pen she handed him and began filling out the requested information. I'm actually really glad you came in today, Shelby continued. I was going to ask Tucker if he could set up a time for me to come talk to the team, or at least you anyway. What for? he asked without looking up. I thought it would be a great idea if we started a big brother type thing here. Blaine's grip on the pen increased, and a hole formed in the paper from the pressure he was applying. A big brother program was out of the question, at least for him. It would involve taking the child out of the center, and being responsible for them, and there was no way he was doing that. No way. The guys on the team could each adopt one of the kids here as a younger brother or sister, take them out, hang out with them, with parental permission, of course. No. The word came out more forcefully than he intended and cut off Shelby's explanation. Her mouth hung open as she stared at him. No, why not? The kids would love it. Great. Now he'd done it. How did he convince her not to do this without telling her his real reason? I just... We're going to be too busy with the season starting soon. Maybe that's an idea we can save for after the season ends. She stared at him, and he knew she was trying to decide if he was telling the truth. No doubt she would ask Tucker to confirm Blaine's excuse. Should he try to convince Tucker to agree with him? He had a feeling that Tucker wouldn't lie for him. He'd changed since becoming a believer. Would the man agree on his own? It was possible. 
The schedule was challenging, especially at the beginning of the season. But Tucker might think helping the kids was more important than their challenging season. Okay, I'll table the idea for now. Her voice held a note of sadness. I still think it's a good one. Blaine breathed a sigh of relief. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it was better than nothing. And maybe by then he would be able to take it on. So, what would you like me to do today? The kids really love when you guys teach them drills, or whatever it is you do for football. Do you have some you could share? Blaine smiled at Shelby's clear lack of knowledge about the sport. He'd have to remember to tease Tucker about it later. If he was planning to marry this woman, she needed to at least have a working idea of the game. I can probably figure something out. Great. Two of our high schoolers are with them now, but I'm sure they'd love a break. Blaine nodded and continued into the main gym area. The kids were playing some form of tag with two teenagers, but the game came to a screeching halt when they saw him. Almost like a tidal wave, they discarded their game and came barreling toward him. He recognized many of the faces from the Christmas party and the last few times he had volunteered, but there were several new ones as well. Word must be spreading, and the thought made him smile. Kids needed a place like this. You're Blaine Hollis, aren't you? The question came from one of the newer faces, a stocky boy who had all the classic markings of a bully. The fierce eyes, the crossed arms, the tight line of his lips. I am. How would you guys like to learn how to throw a football today? Blaine quickly scanned the room. He knew the center had used some of the money they'd received to buy new footballs, but he wasn't sure if they would have enough for all the kids. They'd have to take turns. I want to learn how to throw a football, a young girl with braids piped up. The bully turned on her. Girls don't play football. They can't throw, and they definitely can't take a hit. The girl's face fell, and her head dropped to her chest. Blaine knew he should do something, say something, but was he allowed? That's not true. Girls can play football if they want to. He saw the girl look up at him. There are a lot of people in this world who will try to tell you what you can't do. But the only one who really knows that is you. He shot a pointed stare at the bully before turning back to the girl. What's your name? Belinda. Her voice was quiet as if she wasn't sure she believed him, and he noticed her eyes shift to gauge the other boy's reaction. Well, Belinda, how would you like to be my helper today? I'll show you first, and when you have it down, you can help me show the other kids. Would you like that? The light returned to her eyes, and her shoulders lifted a little higher. I'd like that. He held out his hand to her and let her lead the way to the sports closet. Kenzie Kenzie smiled as she responded to the text from Blaine. He was off tomorrow and willing to meet her at the cabin to remove the old furniture, if it worked for her schedule. She had nothing pressing taking priority over his job, so she'd readily agreed. Besides, she couldn't wait to see him again. He hadn't kissed her the other night, even after dinner, but she'd seen the want in his eyes more than once, and the want was definitely in her eyes. She'd been thinking about his lips a lot lately. A lot. Perhaps tomorrow at the cabin would be the perfect opportunity. But before she let her mind skip too far down that trail, she needed to let Shelby know the good news. The venue she had wanted for the wedding, an old church with an elaborate reception area, had just responded to Kinsey's message that they were available. Even though the wedding was still months away, Kinsey knew she would need to devote a lot of her time to making it the perfect space for Shelby, especially after she finished Blaine's cabin. Hopefully, by then she would have some more jobs lined up, but currently her phone was still silent. Though daunting, she was trying hard not to be discouraged. She knew that if worse came to worse, she could always return to the center and work with Shelby, but that wasn't what she wanted. God, I think decorating is my call, but I want to make sure I'm following your will. Please show me if I'm wrong and open doors if I'm right. The short prayer was one she'd been repeating often, but she knew that God worked in his time and not in hers. Oh, and please give me a sign about Blaine. I know something is going on with him, but I don't know how much I should invest. Can you help me guard my heart if he's not the guy for me? Though she heard no audible reply, she knew he had heard her and would answer. 
As hard as it was, she would be patient. Grabbing her laptop and purse from the passenger seat, Kenzie stepped out of the car and headed for the center. Shelby would probably just be closing, so it was a perfect time to meet her. The front door was already locked, but thankfully Kenzie still had her key. She unlocked the door and called out, I've got good news, before locking the door behind her again. Shelby's head popped up in the reception window. She'd probably been running the reports for the night. Oh yeah? I've got some news too, but you go first. Kenzie continued around the small reception area to the open door and set her computer and purse on the table. I got a call from the church you wanted. They can fit you in, so we need to decide how you want it to look. That is fantastic, Shelby said as she sat next to Kenzie. But I'm not sure I have that all figured out yet. I know I want pink and white flowers and tulle and ribbons, but you are way better at what it will look like than I am. Okay, well, that at least gives me some ideas to work with. Kinsey opened her laptop and pulled up a blank document to begin typing the notes in. Do you care what kind of flowers? Ranunculas. I've always loved how they looked, and maybe a few orchids. Only a few, though. For some color, I know they're expensive. Kinsey noted the choices and tried to picture the flowers. If she was right, ranunculas looked similar to white roses, only fuller. Peonies might be pretty too, but they're also kind of pricey. Oh, and once I saw this bouquet that had flowers that trailed down like ribbons. Stephanotis, Shelby said with a nod. Yeah, those are pretty and inexpensive. Kinsey narrowed her eyes at her friend. When did you get so informed on flowers' names? Pink spread across Shelby's cheeks, along with a look of chagrin, as if she'd been caught stealing cookies from the jar. Since I got engaged, I've been spending my free time in the evenings going over pictures and finding what I liked. I figured I might as well learn their names, too. Kenzie wondered if she would be like that if she ever got engaged, and then she realized she'd probably be worse. The designer in her wouldn't allow anything mismatched or out of place. Her poor future husband. Okay, well that sounds good. I can start working up some ideas based on this. And if you think of anything else, you can always reach out to me. Now, what was your news? Shelby's smile faded and concern flooded her eyes. Are you still working with Blaine? Uh Uh-oh, Shelby looked as if bad news was coming next. Yeah, why? Shelby bit her bottom lip and stared at the table a moment before speaking again. He came in today for his day here. You know how they're doing one day a month? Kenzie nodded. She was aware of the plan. Was he awful or something? I thought he did fine the last few times he was here. She knew she was falling for him, but if he wasn't good around children, would that change her opinion? She did want to be a mother one day. No, he was great with the kids. He stood up to one of our newer kids who's a bit of a bully and really made this little girl's day. But... Kinsey didn't know why Shelby looked apprehensive. That was good news. She wished she'd had someone like Blaine to stand up for her in middle school, when the bullying and teasing was the worst. She thought back to her last day of eighth grade. Kenzie's stomach clenched as she watched Tyson James take the whiteboard marker. The teacher had allowed the students to play win, lose, or draw on the board, and Tyson had nearly bounded out of his seat to be the first. She wasn't sure what to make of Tyson. He always seemed to have a cruel word to throw her way as they passed in the hall, but he would always end it with a wink. Her mother had assured her that he was only picking on her because he liked her, but Kenzie wasn't so sure. He began drawing across the whiteboard, and her heart sank as she saw a stick figure come to life. Around her, the other kids began guessing, but Tyson just laughed and kept drawing. As soon as he added the pants, rounding around the waist, she knew he was drawing her. She'd put on a few pounds this year, but her mother had refused to purchase any more, claiming that Kinsey should just lose weight or take responsibility and buy her own clothes, if she wanted more after the initial beginning of year purchase. Tyson hadn't let her too tight pants go unnoticed, and often asked her if maybe she should consider skipping a few lunches. As soon as he stepped back, one of his friends piped up. 
It's Kenzie getting ready for feeding time. Laughter broke out across the room and Kenzie grabbed her bag and fled. She'd spent the rest of the day in the nurse's office, hiding out. That event had been the straw that broke the camel's back and sent her on her strict journey of eating better and staying in shape. Even though she had entered high school looking completely different, that memory of eighth grade had stayed with her and affected her self-confidence. How different it might have been if one of her classmates had stood up for her. But I floated an idea by him about the players being big brothers to the kids, and he was dead set against it. Did he say why? Kinsey was still getting to know Blaine, but she couldn't see him not wanting to help out the kids, especially after the story Shelby had just shared. He said it was because the players would be too busy at the start of the season, but I don't think that was the real reason. I'm only saying something because I want you to be careful. I know you've had a crush on him for ages, and I was pushing you toward him at the dinner. Kinsey placed a hand on Shelby's arm to stop her friend's rambling. Don't worry, I am being careful. Something in his past is affecting him, but I don't know what yet. He told me something kept him from connecting emotionally, but that he wanted to try with me. An expression of deeper concern etched in Shelby's face, and she squeezed Kenzie's arm. Just be careful. I don't want to see you get your heart broken. Neither did Kenzie.